Uh, my name is William Sitchenba. I'm an actor. I'm a, I'm a humanitarian, and that's it. Um, I've been I've been acting for the past 22 years now, or rather, I've been in the industry for the past 22 years, and uh, I think I started when I was eight. <coughs> where I didn't intend to, to act. I had um, a family friend by the name of Afamo Kereke. He's still a producer now. Uh, he came to the house. He was the, the, the friend of the family. Then I said some things that he liked. He was like, oh, you really be good in a movie. And uh, I did my first film, which is Journey of the Dead. Uh, I played along uh, Uncle Pete Doche, Auntie Hilda Dokubo, Uncle Clemson Hamaze, you know, those big names. And I was, you know, I played a, a sub lead role in the movie. And it, it, it was really, it was really, really good. They liked it. I was like, ah, have you been acting? I said, no, it's, the, it's my first time. So from then, I've, you know, just been coming and uh, I think 80 something movies and counting now. Yeah. I tell people this, but it's funny, you know, starting off at that age, you barely know what you want for yourself at the age of eight. But um, I, I have always had this thing for music. As a matter of fact, I, I also do music. I have like 10 tracks that I have recorded on my phone, you know. So yeah, music has always been there. And I, I think it comes with most entertainers, uh, most times you find out they have more than one one talent. You know, um, some some musicians I know are models. Some musicians I know can act. Some so for me, acting gave the open the platform for me. But music was also there, still there. So yeah. Uh, in terms of my the acting career, we did this movie, The Messenger. Uh, Chi Chi was the director, and RMD was uh, RMD was in a movie, and I was supposed to play this guy that disobeyed the, the queen, and the queen ordered uh, her guards to drown me. This was many years ago, and this guard that was just brought, was trying to show us that he can act. I forgot that I'm a human being. And he literally took me and was actually drowning me inside this river. And it, it wasn't funny because we had to take a couple of takes and I had to make the director understand that. This guy, does, I'm, I, he was actually, and the guy told me, you have to make it real, you know? and. We did the second take and he repeated itself and the director was almost like, oh, okay, we can do it. I said, I'm done. I'm not. I, I was walking out of set. We were like, you don't do that. I said, do whatever you want to do. I'm done. You're trying to kill me, you know? So that left a serious mark. And I think, uh, he, he, I mean, I can swim to an extent, but he, he gave me a phobia for water ever since then because I was like, what, 12? Yeah, so... So aside from other things, but acting for me is not something that uh, acting is. So people say actors are born, not made. So for me, acting is like is, is like part of me. So even when you don't have all the money to pay me, and I love your script, and it's something that I would want to do, I go ahead and do it. So it has always been fun for me. Yeah. The, the least I can see, because there's a lot about the AF, is uh, he's one of the, it's going to be, if not the number one, romance comedy film of 2020. It's a project that when, uh, when they told me about, I was very excited when I read the script and it, it played out what you can relate to, which is mostly what people want to see. And it was a project that, you know, challenged most of us, <clears throat> you know, uh, brought out the best from us. And uh, 
Even me that, I, that I'm in the movie, I can't wait to see the movie, so yeah. Um, I'm going to tell you secrets and I hope it will help you and whoever is listening. Every morning I wake up, I first of all realize that my life is not mine and I, I don't decide the bread I breathe right now. So someone decides that, that's God. And if that is a fact, what that means is that there are plans and purposes he has for me. So what I do is when I wake up, I say, Lord, let your will be my ambition. Let what is in your heart be what I, I will do today. So most times uh, when people see things happen in my life, they think, oh, I'm very well connected, you know. But basically what I did was to yield my life completely to God and say, use this for whatever you want to do. And one of his biggest hard desires is to reach as many people as possible through uh, the platform of entertainment, politics, economy, government, education and all. So he's trying to raise kings that will represent him in this first. And it's, it's mostly difficult for him to find people that will be not be affected by the fame or anything. So uh, the day I made up my mind to be one of those people that will use not just my platform, but my life to uh, advance the kingdom of God, knowing that this place is just temporary. I mean, I'm 30 today. I can remember when I was 10. And before I know it, I'm 60. Before I know it, I'm dead. But people think that when, you, when you're done, when you're dead, you're gone. But that is a transition of you know the life after here and it's the outcome of what you did with your life here that will determine where you're going to so for me everything you see has already been planned by god and the way you are now i just sit down and i get calls from people sometimes i don't even believe you know and and when i try to ask myself how does this happen i remember that i have an agreement with somebody that if you keep this part of the deal i keep this part of the deal and that is just a nutshell of how things are happening. Right now, I have six movies already for the year. I'm starting the production tomorrow. Five days later, I'm starting another one. After that, 20 days, I'm starting another one in South Africa. After that, I'm doing another one in China. After that, I have another one. I'm not going to call their names because it's still I'm doing another one in the US. After that, I'm coming back to Lagos for another one. So, till... September, my whole stuff is booked, and I've not even talked about what I want to do for myself. And I and 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 just so you know, ever since I've been filming for the past 22 years, I've never been for, gone for an audition in my life, not for once. So yes. I've always I've always been a giver right from time, but the thing escalated that. Uh, 2017, December 13th, I was coming back from, from the US uh, and I was driving from the airport to my house in Lekki and I saw this man who was in his mid-60s, I could tell because he looked like my father's, had my father's looking age and he was selling ice cream, this uh, 15 hour ice cream, those ones they carry in and and there was traffic, so he was trying to chase this car down to sell. I think they were already transacting. And the traffic started moving like seriously. And the car left and he because he was a bit old, he was he, he missed a step. And one leg entered the other leg and he fell into the the car, the car lane. And an oncoming boss that wasn't aware of you know climbed him and killed him on the spot right in front of me and people started shouting and i parked but my driver was driving me so we parked and we noticed that he was lifeless but there was already blood coming out you know from and his ice cream what was what was there and and i knew that man wasn't killed because he stole or because he was involved in a, in in some crime that man died solely to feed himself and his family. And I thought about his kids and his wife waiting for daddy to bring money for food uh, for that day. And ever since that time, I looked and I realized that because I lived in America and I know that when you see somebody on the street that is begging, most times it's because they are either on crack, drugs or something. It's rarely because the... Uh, uh, 
because the government provides some welfare for them. If you're hungry, there are places you can go to for rehabilitation and you get better if, you have, if the system has kicked you out. And what I mean by that is if your credit is no longer good, you can't get a job. There are places you go to in America that they've set it up to, you know, rejuvenate you and you get back on your feet. And, you know, so most times people that are on crack and cocaine don't want to be part of that system because the system, one of the reasons why you have to, um, one of the criteria you can be there is that you will not be do doing drugs so they go and they, they'll rather beg for money for drugs rather than be there so that is understood but in Nigeria you see people are actually struggling people are suffering and back to the question you asked me why do I do this I put myself in their shoes and sometimes when I do that I find myself literally crying what if I am this boy that is under this that is bridge cold having eaten trying to sell this plantain what if i am this man under the sun sometimes i see them hours and hours they are trying to sell some useless thing well for me it's useless because the, the profit they made from it is 20 naira 30 naira what is that going to make what how is that going to change your life and you see how much passion and work they put in these things and after that man died that day the next day i saw a man that was selling christmas lights and immediately what happened to the man, you know, and I was like, can you just leave the road? And I gave him dollars, I think $60. I just gave him, I said, leave, just because of the truck, because of what I saw, he was like, ah, God will bless. I just said, just go home. I don't know what I will do for you. And I looked and there were a lot of them. And I went to the bank and I withdrew almost everything. Now, people now ask the question, uh, if you're doing this thing, why why do you have to post it? Didn't the Bible says and all that? Uh, when you post it, your blessing is no longer there. And, and I was talking to somebody. I said, first of all, I'm not doing this for any blessing to come to me. And secondly, the reason I post this is, as of the time, I had 1.2 million followers, right? And I said, I have a platform. I can only help one person at a time, and it's only one person that will benefit. But if I post this and I beg and encourage my fans, at least 10% to do what I'm doing, I'm, I'm not only getting one person, I'm getting 120,000 people off the streets. So for me, it's the chain reaction that I do. And when you notice when I post, I tell you, do it where you are. By that, we are cleaning up, we have more than 10 plus million homeless people in Nigeria, in a country that is so blessed with a whole lot of things. So, I knew talking, going to social media and saying the government is not doing this wasn't going to solve it. It has never been, a, it, there have never been, a, a, there have never been a solution that was solved by the rant of youths on social media. There have never been one. So why am I wasting my saliva talking about something that I can start up? At least, let it be, if I help two people from one million people, it's no longer one million, the number has reduced. And if I have such platforms, I think uh, people should emulate and you know follow such steps. And ever since then, I I know I had to be. Jesus said in the Bible, "The works I did, greater works shall you do." And why he made that statement is, if if you are very conversant with the Word of God, you realize that um, he did a lot of miracle, helped a lot of people, and all that. So. The works he did, if he fed 5,000 people, greater workshop, you do means you should feed 100,000 people. And the reason why he was was limited because he had limited time. He only did ministry for three years. So Jesus died at 33, right? And sometimes we have grace to live 70, 80, and all those things, what are you doing with them? So, yes. Because I can't speak for everybody, I can only speak for myself. And what I would say for, about that is people have different reasons of doing what they do. And for me, it's not uh, the fact that I have not had the opportunity to do something uh, bad or, some, or, or cheat, but because I know what the consequences of doing that for me is. I know that in the past when I have tried to uh, play or be um, I wouldn't even use the word unfaithful because I'm not married like that. But um, going deep, when I, I, I get very intimate with people, sometimes it affects my finances. So for me, staying away from fornication and, and such things is not because I, I don't feel like a man when I wake up or anything. It's 
mostly because of the consequences that comes after the action. So it comes like, okay, after 10 minutes or 20 minutes of pleasure, are you willing to go six months of, yeah, of brokenness or one year of that? So the thought of that just corrects my head and I'm in place. Like I said, I, I think people have different reasons of doing something, but I think um, I think it's childish when you cannot approach. If I have a problem with you and I claim you're my friend, the first thing, and I value my friendship or relationship with you, the first thing I would do is to call you up on the phone and said, Oga, oh why did you do this? You know, let's make our differences out. Because even the Bible says that when there's an issue and you try to talk it out with the person and the person doesn't agree, say you can't bring the elders to talk it out with the person. Say, if the person doesn't agree, say then you can leave the person. So when such things happen, sometimes it's clout. They are trying to trend for that week and most people do a whole, of, a whole lot of horrible things just to trend. But what you forget is that the internet never forgets. So you put out things, scandals that you planted yourself or something that you say because because of this term that any publicity is good publicity then you 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 naked you get naked you put ash uh, 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 weed ash on the bible just because you're trying to get that but what you don't know is that that thing is going to be there for years and your kids are going to ask you questions you know so most people look at the temporary and forget that there is a future ahead of that so when I see such things, I, I just feel it's childish. It's childish when you cannot man up or, or woman up and approach whoever you're having problems with and say, okay, why don't you squash things out? And, and, and the social media is amoral. It can be used for something good, or it can be used for something evil. It can be used by the devil, or it can be used by God. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? My name is William Suchemba. Yeah, so Dear Afi is coming out on the 14th of February. That's Valentine's Day. So that money you're planning to use and each other man take your gift and save it. Take it to the cinema and watch this film. It's a romantic film, so you won't even say that you don't like the film. I just take your girlfriend and uh, your psychic. Uh, sorry, don't take your psychic. Afi, how many times did I call you? Did I by any chance put Cameroon pepper inside your father's eye? Oh, yeah. Just take your girlfriend and go and watch Dear Afi because it's the biggest thing of 2020. Dear Afi Cinema, 14th of February 2020 and I'll see you there.